Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Breeder Man Studios, and now we're going to get into using Forge Networking. And so I've opened up Unity, a blank Unity project, nothing was in it, dropped in the Forge Networking package, and we're ready to go. So what I want to do is make a game so that we have uh, our players that are able to uh, see a cube. The server will own a cube, so the server will start, it'll create a cube, and then it can move the cube around. And then the clients that connect can see the cube moving around in space. So one of the very first things that I like to do with this is open up the build settings uh, and then go to the player settings and turn on run in background. That's going to be the, one of the most important things you do that hangs up a lot of people. So that's the first thing we're going to do here. Next, I'm going to find the multiplayer menu. Um, if you you probably don't see this on your screen, this little menu thing here in the game view. If you go and look for a mole to player menu, you'll find it here. Just open it up. And that is actually going to be our first scene that we put up. So now we've gotten all this setup work out of the way and we're ready to plan out our network code, create our network code, and see our cube moving around. So in Forge Networking Remastered, we have set up this thing called the Network Contract Wizard, which we just call NCW. If you're inside of the Discord chat and you see NCW, that's what it is, Network Contract Wizard. What this thing does is it actually allows us to blueprint our networking. So if you go up to Window, Forge Networking, Network Contract Wizard, or Control-G, um, you'll get this nice little nifty Network Contract Wizard. There's a few things already in here. We can go ahead and ignore those because those are just some samples um, that we don't really care about. You can just leave those in for now and just ignore them. So to start, I'm going to think about my scene. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now. I'm going to open up a new Unity scene here, and I'm just going to save it out to the Assets folder and just call it Move Cube up here in the assets folder, move cube. So I have my scene. Now I want a cube in here. I want this cube that can be moved around by the server. So I'm gonna create a cube at zero, zero, zero. That's nice and centered in the camera here and ready to go with our networking. Now we need to think about our networking. What is this cube doing? This cube is gonna be moving in space. It's gonna be moving up on the Y and then across on the X. So it's gonna be moving around in 3D space. So the one thing that we need to send across the network is the position. The position is important for us to send, otherwise how can everyone see this thing moving and where it's at in the world? We don't really have anything else. We're not rotating the cube or doing anything else. So the only thing we need to worry about in this is the position. So I'm gonna hit create up here in the top right. This will create a new network object. I'm gonna call it move cube. That's gonna be our network object name. Now there are two things here. There's an add field and an add RPC. The field is the one we're gonna be working with. The RPC we'll work with later. Uh, we'll ignore this checkbox, just let's all focus only on this fields section. A field is an unreliable value. Now you may think, well, why would I ever use an unreliable value on the network? That seems crazy. Well, let's think about it this way. If this cube is over here moving like crazy all over the place, constantly updating, then it's not so important that every single position be sent across the network perfectly reliably. If some of those positions get dropped since I'm moving it so much, it doesn't matter that we've dropped some of those positions across the network. Now, uh, that is that is normally, normally what you want to do because reliable network uh, network messages are slower because it has to make sure it got there and got there in order. With these unreliable messages, they just shoot as fast as possible, fire and forget, so they're extremely fast. So the position is a vector three. You saw me click on this enum, go to the drop down to vector three. We have all sorts of different data types that we can use in here. Let's just focus on what we need for this particular uh, instance here, and let's go to the vector three, because this is going to be the position. So let's type in position into this box here as, as the name. So currently the interpolate is off. I can click that button to turn it on. Now you see it's lit up and 0.15. We'll go over what this is later. For, for right now, for most purposes, this is gonna be pretty smooth. Um, it basically smooths out the movement. If we don't have interpolation on, you'll kind of see this 
box move really, really staggered like this. And the reason for that is because not every single position is sent at every frame. It's actually sent at an interval. So let's say every half a second we send a position. So if this is moving like this, you can imagine we're only sending the half uh, second positions in between that. So interpolation makes that nice and smooth for the viewer. So this is all we need is we just needed the position for this cube. So I'm going to get save and compile. So when we save and compile, we see that we now have our move cube network object right here. If we click on that, we can uh, see our stuff here. We got some classic Unity UI errors. We'll clean that up. Uh, so whenever we click on that, you can see we can go in here and we can edit it if, uh, if we need to. So let's just clear that out. And now we're back on our fresh start. We've generated our code. You can actually find the code that was generated inside of the Bearded Man Studios Inc. folder, inside of the generated folder of that, and inside of the user generated folder of that. So you see here's a move cube network object. Here's a move cube behavior. So you can see it generated two classes. One is a network object and one is a behavior. The behavior is the one we care about in uh, this setup. So let's go back up to the root assets folder. Let's right click, create a C sharp script called move cube. And we're gonna open this up in the Visual Studio or whatever editor that you use. What we wanna do is you notice there was a move cube behavior. We actually want to use that. So we'll just copy move cube and we'll paste it there and say move cube behavior. I'm gonna hit control period to bring up this hot box and, and include this using statement. So the generated code, as you might see now, is inside of a namespace Bearded Man Studios Forge Networking Generated. So you're gonna to have to include this namespace in order for you to derive from that behavior that was created. Now, we just wanna do a very simple thing. We wanna press the WASD or the arrow keys to move this cube around, and we want those positions sent across the network. So let's think about the server code only right now. So we'll probably have an update in here. And inside of our update, we are going to uh, move the cube around. We're gonna say if input, or actually let's, let's just say transform.position plus equals new vector three. And we're gonna pass in our fancy X position. So we're gonna say input.get access horizontal. We're gonna move on the Y with the vertical axis, so input get access vertical. And we're not gonna move at all on the Z, so we'll just put zero there for the Z. So we can go ahead and jump over to Unity and confirm that this moves our uh, cube the way we expect it to. So I'm gonna just teleport over there real quick. So instead of Unity, what I need to do is add my script, move cube, do my cube. And we are ready to hit play and see what happens. So here we are playing. If I press the W, D, uh, W, or sorry, W, S, A, and Ds, you can see I can move this cube around. It's a little bit fast. I'll probably slow it down with time.delta time uh, really quick so that it, kind of fits our example a little better. So times time dot delta time, and that'll move it a lot slower. So let's jump back over. Uh, it's crawling. We'll do times 5.0. Try that one. There we go. That's good enough. It's nice and smooth. So we've confirmed that our input keys have moved our cube around. Now we need to think we need to actually send that data across the network so that the clients can see it. So this is server code. We know that for a fact because the server is the one that's going to be controlling this cube because the cube is the cube is inside the scene when the network loads, the server automatically owns it. So what we're going to do here is remember that that fancy position we made inside of the NCW. Let me just go over here and open it up here, network contract wizard. We have our position inside of our fields. So remember that we can actually access that 
since we derived from network, uh, since we derived from move cube behavior, we have access to what's called a network object. This network object, if you hover over it, you'll see here that it says move cube network object. That's the code that was generated for this network object. If we put a dot position, you'll notice that we have a position here. And I can assign this position to the transform position. So I have moved the position using the input keys, and then I have assigned the position to the network object position. This is the data that gets sent across the network. Forge automatically detects that you have assigned this property, and it does all the magic under the hood and sends it over the network. So now that we have the server code, we need to think about the client code. How does a client know that the server has moved or updated its position? How does this client assign its transform position? So what we're going to do is we're going to say if network object dot is server, and what we want to do is say not is server. So if we are not the server, we're going to exit this update. But before we exit the update, we're going to say transform dot position is equal to network object network object dot position. So you may wonder how is this madness even operating? So we assign this on the server and then somehow the client magically works. Well, the answer is pretty simple from uh, what we're looking at here. We're assigning the network object position on the server. The server then does tons of magic to send that data over the network, and then the client actually gets that value in its network object dot position. So this position here is the position from the server. So the server assigns that position. The client automatically has that value updated here in its own network object. So as the client, if I assign my position to what was sent across the network, I'm effectively moving it to where it is on the server. So let's do a complete test of this. Let's save our code. Let's jump back over to Unity. First things first, let's clear out these Unity UI error stuff. And let's open up the build settings. Now we want to add our scene the move cube scene as the second scene because the multiplayer menu, when you hit host or when you hit connect, it automatically goes to the next scene, which is gonna be the move cube scene in this in this scenario, which is what we want. So I'm going to finish that. I'm gonna save my project. And I'm gonna build this out real quick and I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and go to this and select windowed 800 by 600. And I'm just gonna display it here on my display one and it's going to start playing. So the first thing I need to do in the editor is go over to the multiplayer menu, save that scene, hit play here. So I'm playing here and I'm playing here. What we're gonna do is we're going to make the, the instance here, the server, and the Unity editor of the client. So I'm gonna hit host over here on the server. I'm gonna allow access to the network for this. And now I'm gonna come over here and hit connect. You can see the cube is right here, and now we're gonna move it. So now you can see that the cube is moving on the client here in the editor, and here on the server with, uh, with this build. So that's it for our basic first getting started tutorial. I know this one was a little bit long. There's a lot to go over. Uh, we're gonna edit, reiterate all of those for our next tutorials. But here you go, you got your, your first start, a moving cube on a client uh, and a server. And I'm, I can actually run multiple instances of the clients um, and you will see it updating. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I started up three new guys here. I'm gonna connect on all three, go back to my server, which is this one, and move the cube around. You'll see that it moves in all of the clients. So that's it for this tutorial. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the community.